Hello there, this is an Algebra 2 video. It is Chapter 7, Section 2, and today we are talking about solving exponential equations and inequalities. So, in order for us to solve exponential equations, actually quite simple, um, these two equations, um, the two sides of the equal sign, will be equal as long as they have the same base and their exponents are equal. So the first job that we have to do is to kind of try to make them have the same base, because clearly the base here is 2, the base here is 8. But we know that 8 is 2 to the third power. So we could rewrite this as 2 to the third power to the third power, because the 8 will be represented by 2 cubed, and then we have the cube from here. And then if we use a rule that we know 3 to the third power, we multiply the exponents if you have a power raised to a power. Now you have 2 to the x equals 2 to the 3 times 3, which is 9. So now that we look at it, the only way for these two sides of the, any, of the equation to be equal is for their exponents to be equal. So these two expressions will only be equal if x equals 9. And that is how you solve. So again, our goal is to get both sides to have the same base. So again, here we see that we have a 3 to 9. So the 9 could become a 3 squared and then to the 2x minus 1 power, and then 3 to the 6x. Um, and then, because you have a power raised to a power, you multiply the exponents, so you're going to get 3 to the 2 times 2x minus 1 equals 3 to the 6x. All right? Um, so this is going to become 3 to the 2 times 2, which is 4x minus 2, equals 3 to the 6x. And so now that we have the same base, we can equate the exponents. So we have that 4x minus 2 has to equal 6x in order for these two to be equivalent. And so we subtract 4x from both sides. So you get negative 2 equals 6 minus 4 is 2x, divide by 2, and it turns out that x equals negative 1. If x equals negative 1, then the two sides of this equation will be equivalent. So x equals negative 1. So now we're going to have you do this, do it yourself. Remember that the key here is to get the basis to be the same and then to equate the exponents. All right. So now we have in example 2 a situation where they want us to write um, an exponential function. So we have to remember that the basic exponential function is y equals a times b to the x. And that's a times, not like a, I think it was like a, like a, a period, but it needs to be a times b to the x power, like that. Okay, so it says, um, and again, a is the initial amount. So we're going to use the information from the problem to actually figure out what a and b are in this, in this case. It says, Kristen starts an experiment with 7,500 bacteria cells. After four hours, there are 2,300 cells. So basically, when she starts the experiment, we're going to call that T equal to zero hours. She just started. So at the very start of the experiment, she has 7,500 cells. And then four hours later, so when T is four, or X is four in this case, then she has 2,300. So we have two um, ordered pairs that give us information. So this is writing an exponential function that could be used to model the number of bacteria after x hours if the number of bacteria change at the same rate. So that's x hours. So at the start, x is 0. Four hours later, x is 4. And so all we have to do is plug in this information here. So the y value is 7,500. We don't know what a is. We don't know what b is. But we know that x is 0. Okay. So b to the 0 power is 1. So now that's gone. So if this is gone, it means that a equals 7,500. So, so far, we know that y equals 7,500 times b to the x. So we figured out what a was. a was 7,500. And now we can just use the second point to find out what b is. Because the y value is 2,300 equal to what we already know, which is a is 7,500 times b to the fourth power. So I divide by 7,500 on both sides, 
and 2300. Let's see here, 2300 divided by 7500 is 23 over 75 equals b to the fourth power. Now to get rid of b to the fourth power, we can raise both sides to the one fourth power or take the fourth root of both sides. All right, and so that would cancel and b would be that answer to the one fourth power, which is approximately 0.744. So our final equation would be y equals 7,500 times 0.744 to the x power. That would be the um, exponential function that we could use to model this situation. Um, All right, so I just noticed a little bit of a mistake, but it's not a mistake um, because I did something wrong other than the fact that I wrote something not right. Um, originally, this problem should have said 23,000. I forgot a zero, so this should be 23,000, which is going to affect, not. it's not going to affect our A value, but it is going to affect um, our value here because instead of putting 2300, it should be 23,000. So 23,000 divided by 7,500 is actually 46 fifteenths. I really apologize for this. And then 46 fifteenths to the one fourth power is going to be 1.323. So our value is 1.3. Two, three, to the x. So 7,500 times 1.323 to the x power. And now we can actually use that equation to put in part B. How many bacteria cells can be expected in the sample after 12 hours? All we have to do now is replace x with 12. So y is going to equal 7,500 times 1.323 to the 12th power. Remember what I have to do before. Do not take 7,500 times 1.323. You want to go 1.323, 1.323, raise it to the 12th power first, which is 28.7553, and then times that by 7,500, and you will get that after 12 hours, you will have... 215,664.86 cells, or basically 215,665. You can round that up um, in that case. Alrighty, so now we're going to have you do this example, and then we're going to move on to compound interest, which is an application of exponential functions, which we've already done in the past, done in Algebra 1, but just in case you've forgotten, here's our formula. The A is the amount in the account after two years, P is the initial amount that you invest, R is your interest rate, and N is the number of compoundings. So, it says an investment account pays 4.2% annual interest, compounded monthly. Compounded monthly means that N is going to equal well, the number of months in a year, because that's what compounding is there. If you recall here, it says the number of compoundings per year. So, um, 12. Uh, let's see what else it says. If $2,500 is invested in this account, so um, the initial amount invested is $2,500. What will be the balance after 15 years? So, T is 15 years. And so, the only thing that we're missing here is our R. And R is 4.2%, but again, you want to use that as a uh, decimal. So you want to 0.042 as a decimal as opposed to a percent. And that's all you got to do. So now our formula was A is equal to the initial amount, P, 
times 1 plus R, which is 0 0.042, divided by N, which we said was 12, raised to the N 12 times T, which is 15. So all we have to do is solve this little guy. So we're going to first go 0 0.042 divided by 12. And that's going to give us 0 0.0035. We're going to add 1 to that. So we have 1.0035. Next, I'm going to take the 12 times 15. That's the exponent. That's going to be 180. So now I'm going to take 1.0035 and raise it to the 180th power. And that's going to give me 1.8755. Then I'm going to times that by 2,500 and get my final amount to be $4,688.87 because it's 866. And so I'm going to round that 866 to 87. $4,688.87. So now if you will do this do-it-yourself question, then we will move on to our last example, which is dealing with inequalities. But lucky for us, dealing with inequality um, is much the same as dealing with an equation where you want to make sure that the exponents are um, equivalent, basically. They have to have the same base here. So in this case, we don't have the same base, and um, 16 is not going to be a um, factor of 8. Um, but we know that 8 is 2 cubed, so I can get 2 cubed, um, and 16 is 2 to the 4th power. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16. So you can replace the 16 with 2 to the 4th, and then to the 2x minus 3. And we know that even in the case of inequality, it's preserved as long as they have the same, the inequality is preserved as long as they have the same base. So this is going to be 2 to the 4 times 2x minus 3, which then becomes 4 times 2 is 8x minus 4 times 3 is 12. And so now since you have the same base, the inequality is preserved for 8x minus 12 should be less than 3. If 8x minus 12 is less than 3, then 2 to the 8x minus 12 would be less than 2 to the 3. So we add 12, and then you get 8x is less than 15, divide by Ocho, and x is less than 15 eighths, which is approximately 1.875. But of course, we prefer the fraction, but just in case you wanted to make sure it's 1.875. So that is how you do an inequality. So we'll let you um, do that in this case. Remember that when you have fraction like this, you want to um, attempt doing like 3 to the negative power of something, and same in the case of that one. Um, and then it'll be easier for you. But once you have completed this example, you will have completed your notes for this lesson. And I will see you in class, and thanks for watching.